In this lesson, we'll get into beat grids, why they're important in digital DJing, and how to adjust them if needed. Beat grids essentially allow Rekordbox to determine the BPM or tempo of a track, and it does this by placing beat markers on a track's waveform after it's been analyzed. Beat grids are important because not only do they tell you the tempo of a track, but they also give you additional information. A red beat marker means it's the start of a bar or a measure, and Rekordbox places a red beat marker after every four beats. You can see that in this track that I've got loaded over here. This is a red beat marker, and after four beats, one, two, three, four, you've got another red beat marker here, one, two, three, four, and another one. And you also get a beat count display near the playhead, and by default, it tells you your position in a track. The first number is the measure number, so in this case, it is measure number one, and the second is the beat number. And right now we are in beat number one. So if I play this back, you'll find that the beat number increases after we go through each beat in a bar. And when we go to the next bar, the bar number also increases. Four, two, three. And so on. Almost all dance music is made in what's known as 4-4 four, four time. This means that a quarter note counts as a one beat, and each measure or bar has four beats. That's why house music is known to have a four to the floor beat, giving it that dugs 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 sound. While Rekordbox does a great job of automatically adding beat grids for you and giving you an accurate tempo reading, Sometimes it doesn't. For example, it could place a beat marker at the very beginning of a track because of some extraneous noise that isn't part of the music itself, or it could miss the first beat totally and put a beat marker at the second beat. For these reasons, you may have to do some editing to the beat grid, and thankfully it's easy to do in Rekordbox. Here's how. So let's load another track that I've got here. Drop that in there. So we can see here that Rekordbox has already placed beat markers. And we, from looking at the waveform, we can see that it has actually missed the first one. So if we move the playhead, the first beat is actually in here. Let's play this track back. Yeah, so the first beat should be here, but Rekordbox mistakenly placed it over here. So in this case, it totally missed the first beat altogether. So here's how to fix that. Remember that grid tab below the waveform display that we looked at in the first module of this course. Let's open it up again right now. I'm going to go to grid over here. And now we're going to get a new set of controls. And these are all dedicated to adjusting and making tweaks to the beat grid. So let's take a look at the first button over here. This button is the set beat grid button. And this button lets you mark the first beat of the entire song. And this is useful if Rekordbox makes a mistake in adding a beat marker on the first beat. Let's say it adds a marker at the silent portion in the beginning of the track, or it misses the first beat and places it on the second. In this case, that is exactly what happened. It placed the first beat over here instead of over here. So to fix that, all you gotta do is to move the playhead over to the first beat, where, or where the first beat should be, which is right here, and then we just click on this button. And now you can see that the red beat marker has been placed at the first beat, and everything has been moved. So now you've got 1.1 bars over here in the beat counter, meaning this is the first measure and this is the first beat of that measure. So now everything is all right. Let's play this back. Yeah, everything looks right. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, everything looks okay. So that is one example of fixing the beat grid using record boxes controls. Let's skip to the beginning again. Okay, so let's take a look at the other controls here in the beat grid window. This is the tempo window, and this lets you type in a specific BPM. This changes as you adjust the beat grid, and you can also tap it out if you want. 
using the tap tempo button over here. Right now, it's set the right tempo at 100 BPM, so no need to make any changes. Now, these two buttons here let you shift the entire beat grid to the left or to the right in small increments. This is good for fine tuning. You can try that out right now. If you press this, you can see those markers moving to the right. And if I click on this, it'll move it back to the left. So let's just move it again to its default state. There you go. If you need to see that in greater detail, of course, you can just zoom in on the waveform and you can make those changes. Uh, right now, I'm pretty happy with the way that the beat grids are set, so no need to make those adjustments. There you go. And then the next two buttons over here, these let you shrink or expand the beat grids evenly. Again, if you need to make adjustments to the beat grid, these are the controls that you are able to use. So let's see how they work. If I click on them, you can see the markers moving evenly, expanding, and if I do this, it'll shrink them. Again, you can just zoom in if you want to see them a little bit closer and see how they work. You can see them move ever so slightly. So yeah, let me just put it back to its original state. There you go. Now, these two buttons over here let you double the BPM or half the BPM reading of a track. This is useful if you're DJing with stuff like dubstep, uh, the tempo of which sometimes is analyzed as 140 BPM or 70 BPM. So you can adjust that using these controls to suit whichever tempo reading you prefer. Here's an example. I'm gonna load another track in here. All right, so this song is at 136 BPM. Let's play it back. Yeah, so it's a hip-hop song, and this is probably something that would otherwise fall in a BPM reading of probably around like 68 BPM. And I've got other tracks in my collection that are of the same tempo, and instead of having 136 as uh, the BPM reading, it actually halves it. So we can just use the BPM controls over here. If I press this one, it'll have the value, and then we are going to get 68 BPM, which falls in the range of the hip hop tracks that I've got in my collection. Because more often than not, 136 BPM would be closer to something, again, probably like dubstep, or even if I've got some really fast trance, or if I've got some hard style that falls a little bit on the slower side, that kind of touches on this range. So I'm used to DJing with hip hop tracks, usually on like uh, 65 up until 80 BPM. So I like to keep them uh, at this range. So I can use the BPM controls here, either to double or to have. In this case, I have the tempo, just so it's a little bit more consistent with my collection. Okay, so moving on. This button over here lets you make an adjustment to the entire tune, or this one lets you make an adjustment in a particular spot where you've got your playhead located. The reason you'd want to do this is if you've got a track that has two tempos or has tempos that fluctuate, such as older disco records that are played with a human drummer instead of a drum machine. So if you click on this, you're going to be able to make adjustments to the beat grid starting from this position and you can move the beat markers as you wish. Again, this is something that is used for tracks that are played with a human drummer just because uh, the drum playing in songs like that, such as you know disco music or Motown or soul, they aren't really that tied to a click. They don't have that machine-like precision that using software drum kits or software drum machines or even hardware drum machines have. Now, finally, you've got the undo and redo buttons. So let's just undo that change that we made. There we go, that's how it works. And you also have a metronome over here, also known as a click track, and you also have the metronome volume. Plus, you've got a lock button over here that when enabled, prevents further beat grid changes and track analysis to be made for this particular tune. Now, before we end, let's take a quick look at the two controls over here. Q stands for quantize, and when this is enabled, that means stuff like hot cues, memory cues, and other points are placed directly on top of a beat marker, aka they snap to the beat grid marker. This also works when you are placing beat grid markers over here in the song itself. Let's say you wanna change the position of the first beat, you wanna make it a little bit more accurate, you can use quantize and use the set first beat button and then automatically it'll snap to the 
speed grid. There you go. So that's what the quantize button is for. And finally, this button over here lets you make changes through the waveform display. I'm going to go through some of them right now. This one lets you change the waveform color. Currently, we have it in RGB. You can change that to blue if you like. If your eyes prefer seeing shades of blue instead of um, red, green, and blue. And then you also have two types of track analysis in here, normal. And this is what we've been doing throughout the course. And you also have dynamic. You also have the beat count display. You can change them. Currently, it's set to show you the measure number or the bar number as well as the beat number. But you can also change it to count to the next memory queue. If you've set memory queues, you can use that for bars. And I haven't set any here, so you don't see it. You can change it. You can specify whether you want it to be in bars or in beats. My suggestion is to just leave it at current position bars. There you go. And you also have other stuff in here like active loop playback, which we'll discuss later in this course. And you also have some shortcuts here. Click on the waveform for play and cue. So if you put that to on, whenever you click on the waveform, it plays it back. And when you click on it, it stops it again. So it's just like a little mouse shortcut for you. I'm just going to keep that to off right now because, well, I can just use my keyboard to play and stop tracks. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to set queue, hot queue, and memory queue points. So I'm going to see you then.